The last few years have seen various people debate as to whether seed oils or carbohydrates are worse for health. And I think the answer is both, although it does depend on the dose. Take, for example, this British Medical Journal paper which found that in terms of percent energy intake, diets exceeding 6% seed oils were more harmful than diets containing 50% or more carbohydrate. That is, high seed oil diets defined as constitu constituting more than 6% of daily energy intake are associated with more mortality than high carb diets. Based on the fact that the average Australian derives 13% of their energy from seed oils, it would seem that seed oils are indeed more problematic on a population basis. Now, I'd like to acknowledge the work of Scottish GP, Dr. K Malcolm Kendrick, on exposing the role of blood clots in atherosclerosis. He is the author of this book, which provides an excellent summary of the clotting theory and is also the subject of cancellation by Wikipedia, accused and convicted by online editors of being a fringe figure with the audacity to argue against the lipid hypothesis. Outrageous. And in closing, I'd like to briefly present something for the first time publicly. My theory on the mechanisms of insulin resistance. How can it be caused both by sugar and seed oils? In actual fact, I believe the mechanism by which seed oils and sugar causes insulin resistance is near identical. And this also explains why statins make it worse, why the liver is more affected than fat, and numerous other things. Understand that insulin resistance is increasingly considered the root cause of chronic modern disease. This study divided study subjects into three groupings based on their level of insulin resistance and followed them for six years. In the subjects with the least insulin resistance shown on the left, there were no recorded clinical events over the six year study period. Contrast this with the insulin resistant subjects on the right, who from the top down developed cerebrovascular disease, type two diabetes, coronary heart disease, cancer, and hypertension. Equally striking is this research on insulin resistance and obesity. On the left, you can see that only 2% of the subjects with the least insulin resistance became obese over eight years. Compare this with the 72% of the most insulin resistant subjects, 36 times greater. So what exactly is insulin resistance? Well, it refers to a state where insulin does not work as it should. To compensate, the pancreas often secretes more insulin than usual, leading to high insulin levels, which is often synonymous with insulin resistance. Let's take a look at insulin resistance in action. So one of the functions of insulin is to remove glucose from the circulation and place it into muscle, liver, and fat. Under the action of insulin, Muscle, liver, and fat tissue all receive glucose from the blood. Insulin resistance, however, means that the insulin is less effective, and notably, the liver is most affected. This results in the liver not receiving glucose as it normally would. Because muscle has a finite capacity for how much glucose it can store, under the influence of increased insulin levels, fat tissue now receives more glucose. Now, the key to understanding the cause of insulin resistance is to realize that it's not caused by a problem with insulin itself, but rather by the receptors upon which insulin acts. Which makes sense, because the state of insulin resistance is usually associated with higher levels of insulin. So I wondered whether I could find any evidence of any mechanisms by which both excess sugar intake and seed oils could impair the functioning of the insulin receptor. Now, we've got an abundance of evidence linking fructose containing sugar with insulin resistance. This includes several experimental studies. For example, this study demonstrated that simply by reducing fructose intake, insulin resistance was rapidly reversed. 41 children had their fructose intakes reduced from an average energy proportion of 12% to 4%, while maintaining their total level of energy consumption. And after just nine days, 
there were large improvements in insulin resistance, not to mention a 47% reduction in liver fat after just nine days. The reverse is also true. Increasing sugar consumption induces insulin resistance. In this study, 80 subjects were randomised to either more than two or more than four servings of fruit a day. And after six months, the group consuming the most fruit, along with all of that extra fructose, were significantly more insulin resistant, as well as obese. Now, to understand how sugar causes insulin resistance, we need to come back to the structure of a cell, which is surrounded by a membrane known as a phospholipid bilayer. And embedded within this phospholipid bilayer are insulin receptors, which span the thickness of the cell membrane. When insulin binds to the receptor, the receptor is activated and passes its message into the cell, upon which the downstream actions of insulin take place. If this receptor doesn't work, you'll have a state of insulin resistance where insulin seems to not work properly. The missing link in understanding insulin resistance comes down to the fact that the phospholipid bilayer is in fact not a homogenous ocean of phospholipids. Rather, it is punctuated by little islands, recently discovered, known as lipid rafts, which float within the cell membrane. These lipids are actually below the resolution of light microscopy and contain large amounts of cholesterol, three to five times that of the surrounding membrane. And insulin receptors are embedded within these lipid rafts. Anything that disrupts the lipid raft can disrupt the function of the insulin receptor. It's well established that excess dietary fructose results in the overproduction of a waxy lipid molecule called a ceramide. And ceramides not only disturb lipid raft function, but they've also been proven to lead to insulin resistance. What about seed oils, though? Well, this 1965 paper provides the earliest account I've found of seed oils causing insulin resistance. It describes the experience of two subjects who were ultimately removed from the study assessing corn oil supplementation. One subject developed glucose in the urine, a classic symptom of diabetes. The corn oil was then stopped and the glucose disappeared from the urine. The corn oil was then resumed, at which point the glucose returned. Eventually, the investigators finally stopped the corn oil supplement for good. The other subject was also noted to have developed diabetes based on the glucose tolerance test only a few weeks after commencing the oil supplement. Now recall that seed oils contain large amounts of these sterols, the fake plant cholesterol. And sterols have not only been proven to be effectively incorporated into cell membranes, but they've also been shown in some studies to disrupt lipid rafts. Remember too, the high cholesterol content of the lipid raft. Well, depletion of lipid raft cholesterol has been proven to be detrimental to both lipid raft function as well as impairing insulin receptor activation. This is no doubt the reason why the rate of diabetes is significantly increased in people who take statins. And what about the differential impact of insulin resistance on different tissues? Well, as it turns out, there are differences in the lipid raft structure between liver cells and fat cells. And this, I believe, explains their differential sensitivity to cholesterol depletion, ceramides, and sterols. And all of the literature which I've looked at so far seems to support this notion. So I was sitting in this uh, same theater yesterday listening to Dr. Zoltan talk about how antipsychotic medication causes insulin resistance and diabetes. I thought, well, that was interesting. Let's have a look and see if there's any literature on the topic of lipid rafts and antipsychotic medication. And lo and behold, quick search later on Google Scholar, and there are papers describing how antipsychotic medication disrupts lipid rafts. So basically everywhere I've looked at, the lipid raft seems to be central to the development of insulin resistance. And there are biologically plausible mechanisms supported by literature 
describing how both excess sugar intake and seed oil intake can contribute to lipid raft disruption. <laughs>